Yeah, it was good. Okay. Well, Matt, over here. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the victory. I'm curious, given the history you had uh, with Ottman, your, your, the previous canceled fight, the long layoff he had, the things he was saying, uh, how big of a win is this in terms of in, compared to the rest of your career? Uh, you know, it was it was awesome. You know, uh, you we did two full camps work for him. You know, I was a hundred percent prepared for him, and uh, I was a little, you know, I was always a little nervous that he, you know, he wasn't going to show up or something was going to happen. But he made it to the cage, and uh, and uh, we we threw down, and I got it done. I got it done. The commentators, especially Joe Rogan, said that Ottman just seemed off, like maybe the long layoff impacted him because his timing seemed off, his spacing seemed off. Did he seem any sort of awkward or anything in there? Uh, no, you know, honestly, I, I think I got to rewatch the fight. But, uh, you know, I, my spacing was like I was throwing some kicks he was getting out of the way of. Uh, but uh, we were still really, you know, feeling each other out. But uh, he closed the distance. You know, he stepped into my wheelhouse and uh, and I caught him. I was going to ask about that. Did he just walk into that, and or is that something you knew that you could take advantage of that kind of exchange that he was going to rush forward? In? You know, I was planning on when he rushed forward like that to change levels and take him down. But uh, you know, I'm a I'm a shark. I'm a lion. When I smell blood, when you step into the wheelhouse, I'm going to throw. And when I throw, I land. And when I hurt you, I finish you. What was he saying to you at the Wayans yesterday? Because it also looked like he grabbed your hand and like forced you to shake hands with him. What, what was he saying? Uh, he was saying something to Allah. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the walkout song, uh, obviously, Edwin Diaz. Uh, explain the decision to go with that. Yeah, you know, he's the best closer in baseball, and uh, I was, I, I'm the best closer in the UFC, so I had to do it in uh, New York City, represent. Uh, been a lifelong Mets fan, so it's a, it's a great song, and, and it, it got definitely got the crowd going. Where does uh, Jacob deGrom end up next year? Oh, he's coming back home. Right in front of you. Um, what was kind of the game plan coming in here? I think a lot of people thought maybe if, if you were going to find success, it would be in your wrestling kind of your, your roots. But you went out there, you, you you brawled with the guy with great striking, and you won. So was that your intention going in there? Yeah, you know, I you know the whole time, whole all camp coaches tell me use my head. You know, we wanted to go in there, we wanted to we wanted to wrestle him, but Twitter world wanted me to bang, so uh, so I went in there and banged. And just talk a little bit about that. I mean, I feel like you've become such a personality on social media over the last year. Um, how much do you feel like that helps you as an athlete with your brand and getting people excited to see you fight? Uh, it's huge. You know, I love connecting with uh, with the fans, with the people out there. And, you know, I'm a man of the people, so I like to connect. Where do you think this ranks? I mean, winning at Madison Square Garden by knockout against a, I don't know if you want to call him a rival, but somebody you've had history with. I mean, is this the best moment of your career to date? Definitely. It's definitely the best moment, but you know, every next moment's the best moment. You know, the moment before this was the best moment. Now this is the best moment. And when I uh, knock out Patty in London, that'll be the best moment. And that, that's what you want next. Yeah. Honestly, Patty's got a tough fight. You know, Jared Gordon is very good, but win, lose or draw. Even if Patty goes out there and gets smoked by Jar Jared, I want to fight Patty in London. Um, I was just going to say, and, and I know you talked about this before, but what is it that, that makes you want this Patty fight so much? Is it just the, the name recognition, the, the, the again, building your brand? Or do you feel like there's some things that you could maybe um, do to him that people haven't previously? Uh, I love the atmosphere that he brings to the to the fight game. It's electric. You know, it's he's like the way Conor McGregor is coming up. He brings such an atmosphere to the fight. It's amazing. And uh He's a great fighter, you know, and I think me and him will go out there and, and bang and, and put on a great fight for uh, for the fans. Is uh, fighting in London something on your bucket list? Oh, yeah. You know, I love fighting at home, putting on for uh, for the New York, for Long Island. But uh, I also love traveling. And I think March in London makes a lot of sense. How do you think that fight would go down with you and Paddy then? You know, maybe I maybe I rock them and knock them out and finish them. You know, maybe we wrestle and we do a little grappling. You know, I love to grapple as well. Um, he's a, a well-rounded mixed martial artist as well. So am I. So uh, I think it would be a fun fight everywhere. And you've got two first round finishes now in a row. What can you put that success down to, if anything? Uh, you know, consistency, hard work. You know, not 
you know, not letting anything, you know, keep me down, just keep, keep, uh, persevering and, uh, believing in my coaches, believing in myself. And then, you know, we got so many young killers at my gym that just keep me on my toes. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I look around and I'm like the old guy now, you know, we got, we got like a lot of, we had a lot of contender series come guys coming up that I was sparring all summer. You know, I didn't fight all summer, but I was sparring the entire time getting these guys ready. Um, and then, you know, watching the lead from Aljamain Sterling, what, you know, having a, being able to train with him there in his camp and, um, uh, watching how Marab trains, uh, you know, we got a great team and, and, uh, I think it's, you know, it's all led by, you know, coach Ray Longo and, and he's, you know, told coach Ray Longo, make me the next, uh, make me the next Long Island champ. Let's go. Congratulations. Thanks. Hey Matt, over here. Congratulations on the win and on um, with uh, Veterans Day uh, uh, pass. Thank you very much for your service, by the way. Uh, besides the Patty fight, is there anybody in your division that you would uh, that you would want to fight that you feel that would get you to the top closer uh, sooner than later? Um, yeah, you know, honestly, I, I want to travel and I'm pretty healthy. You know, even that Australia card sounds awesome, and and I, you know, fighting a one of those you know beasts from Australia. You know, Jamie Malarkey, that would be a great fight. Um, I'd love to go to Australia, maybe fight him. That's it's a little soon. I think March makes a little bit more sense, but you know, we'll see. Uh, really, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm around the uh, the New York, New Jersey regional scene, so I know that Ray Longo's gym is Murder's Row, and there's plenty of young talent coming that could possibly reach the success and level of success that you, Mareb, and Funkmaster has. Can you give? everybody watching at home like a preview of coming attractions who are the young talent in the gym that people can look forward to and should be on our radar yeah well first you got nazim sodikov he's making his ufc debut in uh in february just had an awesome contender series fight after that you got dennis bazooka coming dennis bazooka should be signed to the ufc soon he's fighting in like two weeks i thought you got dylan montello they got a lot of sparring rounds in with him he's fought for eagle he's fighting soon, um, fighting for Ring of Combat Championship soon. Um, you got Damian Nelson. I was getting a lot of sparring in with him. You got James Gonzalez about to take over Bellator. Kid Marvelous, Justin Montavo, once he uh, gets healthy, he's going to take over Bellator. Charlie Campbell, he's a killer. Once he uh, once he gets healthy, he'll be back ready to, ready to go. You just got, you know, killer after killer at, at the gym. And iron sharpens iron. These guys are young, hungry. And uh, keeps me on, keeps me on my toes. You and your entire team are warriors, and congratulations on the win, by the way. Thank you, Matt. Right here, we forgot about Fumi. Yeah, Fumi. Well, I think I think Fumi actually just retired. Did he officially retire? I think he retired. Oh wow, Fumi Nakuda. He could have been a contender at 125, or definitely a solid UFC guy. But Matt, amazing win. I got to ask you, that was a dog fight. He brought the dog out of Matt Frivola. Did he catch you? Were you rocked there? No, I wasn't rocked at all. He landed like a straight right, right? Kind of. Seemed like he, you guys had like a little exchange where he seemed like he had you on skates for a second. Then you landed like a big jab that kind of like had the crowd and, you know, him backing up a little bit. Yeah, no, nah, he didn't rock me at all. So clean, easy victory. You didn't take any damage in that fight? It, unreal. I was ready for a five-round war. I was ready to be limping out of that octagon. Uh, and, you know, my hands are good. My face is still somewhat pretty. Um, it was a blessing. So best case scenario right there. So you said March might be your next one or what you're looking for possibly. Yeah. Yeah. I, think I can't Monday root. Monday. I can't root against Jared Gordon against Patty. I got to go for Jared. Jared's another guy from New York. Queens. Yeah. We always got to go for, you know, I'm going to be, I mean, yeah, I, I'm, it's an interesting fight. Jared's a beast. I think Jared will probably be the favorite, but we'll see. It's a tough one. Patty's the hype train right now, but so Patty or bust or no, no, you know, it's, you know, one fight at a time. Uh, We'll see. I'll go back. We'll, we'll I'll talk with uh, my team. Talk and uh, and we'll see. You know, honestly, it's a, it's more about like when and where than who for me. But uh, just you know, London would be awesome. And you know, who else would I want to fight in London than you know that that guy? You know. Oh, for sure. So I've seen Big Sal, your dad, going crazy on the streets of New York City during fight week. What's Matt getting into tonight? 
Oh man, we'll see. Uh, I gotta go find my dad. I gotta go find my wife. I gotta go find uh, all my team rollers out there. My brother's over here. Oh, there you go. Yeah, your brother and Billy Q and your dad almost beat up the naked cowboy the other day. Yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw. So uh, maybe we gotta go get the naked cowboy and go uh, knock him out. You know, who knows? <laughs> all right, Matt, you're the man. Congrats. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, guys.